everyone welcome back to the NPTEL session of overview and integration of cellular metabolism. So, we were discussing in our last two classes lipoprotein metabolism this class is about lipoprotein metabolism once again this is the last class of lipoprotein metabolism. So, to recapitulate the previous classes that we have discussed the general structure biochemical properties of li different lipoproteins then the metabolism of different lipoproteins like chylomicron, VLDL, H, LD, LDL, HDL. Now, today we are going to discuss two important topic one is reverse cholesterol transport another is disorders related to lipoprotein metabolism. So, reverse cholesterol transport is important with regards to HDL function or high density lipoprotein function. So, if you remember the metabolism of HDL that the nascent HDL say it intestinal HDL or uh, nascent hepatic HDL they are initially uh, they are initially secreted as pre beta HDL and this pre beta HDL takes cholesterol from extra hepatic tissues then it forms the discoidal nascent HDL. Now, this discoidal nascent HDL if you remember is forming spherical matured HDL 3 how by uptaking cholesterol and cholesterol esters from the peripheral tissue. So, this part is known as reverse cholesterol transport why. Now, remember cholesterol endogenous cholesterol in very low amount or um, sorry exogenous cholesterol which is uh, through uh, ingested through diet that is very low in amount and also endogenously mainly endogenously synthesized cholesterol they are delivered to extra hepatic tissues with the help of the uh, lipoprotein particles like VLDL most important is LDL li uh, low density lipoprotein. So, this is how cholesterol is transported from liver to extra hepatic tissues liver is the synthesizing organ in of cholesterol. So, this is cholesterol transport the reverse one is basically transporting or transferring uh, back of cholesterol from extra hepatic tissue to liver. So, this is known as reverse cholesterol transport and this reverse cholesterol transport is done by HDL. Now, in this regard there are two very important uh, receptors uh, that is playing the those are playing the main role in reverse cholesterol transport. So, one is SRB1 if you remember we have named these two receptors in our previous class SRB1 stands for scavenger receptor B1 and ABC transporter protein ABC stands for ATP binding cassette transporter proteins. So, these two groups of receptors are very important in reverse cholesterol transport. Now, SRB1 plays dual role if you remember once again you can see in the previous slide that in the previous slide as, as we have discussed that HDL2 is basically uptaken with the help of the in, uh, receptor SRB1 in liver. So, through SRB1 receptor the hepatic SRB1 receptor um, HDL is basically transferring the cholesterol or uh, basically there is transfer of cholesterol from HDL to liver. So, SRB1 is playing the role of taking cholesterol from HDL inside the liver that is one role. Another role of SRB1 is basically delivering of cholesterol from extra hepatic tissue to HDL. So, in extra hepatic tissue the role of SRB1 is basically transferring the 
intracellular cholesterol to HDL. So, remember SRB1 receptor or transporter it plays dual role HDL uptakes peripheral cholesterol through SRB1 as well as it delivers its own cholesterol to liver through SRB1 transporter. Now, the other one ABC transporter protein or ATP binding cassette transporter protein it is basically one ATP dependent transporter. So, there is one ATP attached on binding with the ligand these transporters uh, the bound ATP is hydrolyzed the energy is the reason by which there is delivery of intracellular cholesterol from uh, the cell to the HDL. So, ABC transporter protein. Now, ABC transporter protein are of different types. It can be ABC A1, can be ABC G1. Now, remember ABC A1 is important for delivering of cholesterol to the pre beta HDL. So, once again if we go to the previous slide. So, you can see that ABC A1 is important for delivering cholesterol to the pre beta HDL whereas, ABC G1 uh, transporter is important for delivering cholesterol to the discoidal HDL as well as to the matured HDL 3. So, this is important for reverse cholesterol transport. So, you can see pre beta HDL is the cholesterol poor triacylglycerol depleted particle. So, it has the maximum tendency of uh, uptake of cholesterol from the endogenous uh, extra hepatic tissues. Then HDL 3 are also HDL 3 molecules are also important for uptake of um, peripheral cholesterol. So, these two important receptors are there which are actually important for uh, reverse cholesterol transport. Apart from that, that another enzyme that is LCAT if you remember lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase is also important. So, basically the transferred cholesterol uh, the transferred cholesterol which is transferred from extra hepatic tissue to the HDL is actually converted to cholesterol ester with the help of the enzyme LCAT forming the hydrophobic core. So, basically uh, the content of cholesterol is reduced in HDL. Similarly, another protein is there that is CETP. So, CETP what it is causing? CETP is delivering the uh, cholesterol ester from HDL to uh, the other lipoproteins like VLDN and LDL. So, basically these two LCAT as well as CETP they are reducing the uh, cholesterol content in HDL. So, cholesterol depleted HDL form when it circulates through the extra hepatic tissues. The gradients, gradients difference bet of cholesterol between HDL and extra hepatic tissue is the main reason of cholesterol transfer from extra hepatic tissue to HDL. So, basically whenever there is cholesterol poor HDL is circulating through the extra hepatic tissues which contains high amount of cholesterol there is reverse cholesterol transport through the receptor SRB1 as well as ABC transporter protein. So, now we are going to discuss different clinical conditions related to lipoprotein metabolism. They are mostly related to lipoprotein synthesis, lipoprotein transport or lipoprotein degradation. Remember these are the primary uh, defects in lipoprotein metabolism. So, basically these are the inherited condition. Similarly, different other acquired conditions are there where lipoprotein contents are increased or decreased importantly diabetes mellitus, atherosclerosis, kidney disorder like nephrotic syndrome. Those are the acquired condition where lipoprotein concentration is increased in the circulation. But today we are going to discuss the 
familial condition or inherited conditions these are known as the primary uh, dyslipoproteinemias. So, this dyslipoproteinemia can be hypolipoproteinemia, can be hyperlipoproteinemia. So, hypolipoproteinemia are basically where the lipoprotein concentrations are low, hypo, whereas hyper stands for increased. So, hyperlipoproteinemias are basically where the lipoprotein concentrations are increased. So, these are the two important primary hypolipoproteinemias. One is a beta lipoproteinemia. So, A beta lipoproteinemia is basically associated with a defect in synthesis of ApoB. Beta lipoprotein is related to ApoB, apoprotein B. Now, the problem in synthesis of ApoB, and if you remember, ApoB 100 is linked with LDL and ApoB48 is linked with VLDL. So, what will happen if there is uh, sorry um, ApoB48 is basically related to chylomicron I am sorry VLDL and LDL they are linked with ApoB100. So, what will happen there is reduced there will be reduced concentration of chylomicron VLDL and LDL because there is no apoproteins no apoprotein B is there. So, what will happen in blood acyl glycerol concentrations will be very low. So, there will be accumulation of those lipids or acyl glycerols to those organs from where chylomicron and VLDL were synthesized. So, chylomicron were synthesized in intestine and VLDL were synthesized in liver. So, those triacyl glycerol because they cannot come in the circulation through chylomicron or VLDL. So, they will be accumulated inside intestine and liver. So, there will be intestinal malabsorption those lipids cannot be absorbed and cannot be circulate cannot enter the circulation. So, there will be mal intestinal malabsorption and if you remember that Dietary lipid is important for transfer of lipid soluble vitamins like vitamin A, D, E, K. So, there will be severe vitamin these fat soluble vitamin deficiencies and the early death can be avoided by administration of those fat soluble vitamins in large doses particularly vitamin E in this regard is very important. So, this is about beta lipoprotein deficiency. Then we are coming to the alpha lipoprotein deficiency. Alpha lipoprotein is related to HDL. So, there are three primary alpha lipoprotein deficiency. One is Tanger's disease, then there is fish eye disease and finally, APO A1 deficiency. Now, what happens in Tanger's disease? this transporter synthesis is defective. So, if you remember A B C A 1 transporter why it was important remember pre beta HDL the nascent very nascent HDL which is secreted from uh, intestine or liver it was pre beta HDL and pre beta HDL takes up the peripheral or extra hepatic cholesterol with the help of the transporter A B C A 1 to form the nascent discoidal shaped HDL which is finally, forming the other forms of HDL that is HDL 3 or HDL 2. Now, in absence of this A B C A 1 transporter what will happen? HDL remain in HDL will remain in the form of pre beta HDL. So, there will be no discoidal HDL, no matured HDL. And those were important for if you remember those were important for reverse cholesterol transport, those were important for different lipid exchange in between. So, those will not happen. Similarly, fish eye disease is another alpha lipoprotein deficiency where there is 
partial remember there is partial l cat deficiency so lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase enzyme partially deficient in fish eye disease so this l cat is once again that is a lesson from the previous classes that l cat is responsible for converting cholesterol to cholesterol ester in hdl so that is forming once again the whatever cholesterol is actually uptaken from the extra hepatic tissues those are converted to cholesterol ester and forming the hydrophobic core so those are the spherical so l cat is responsible for forming the spherical hdl mature hdl that is hdl3 hdl2 those were formed by l cat so once again the matured hdl will be absent in circulation similarly apo a1 deficiency is another important thing if apo a1 is deficient there will be defect in pre beta hdl formation even so finally what will happen there will be low or near absence of hdl in circulation now if there is absence of hdl remember hdl was acting as the store of ap different apo proteins one very important apo protein is apo c2 so if you remember once again that the nascent chylomicron and the nascent vldl they have been matured with transfer of apo c2 and that transfer occurs from hdl to the uh, nascent chylomicron or nascent vldl and that apo c2 was important why for activation of lipoprotein lipase so lipoprotein lipase was that important enzyme which is finally degrading triacylglycerol and providing the uh, free fatty acid or uh, free fatty acid to the peripheral tissues so that will not happen so lipoprotein lipase will not be activated because there will be no hdl so there will be no apo c2 delivery and there will be no lipoprotein lipase activation so what will happen the circulatory triacylglycerol will be increased because the matured uh, chylomicron or matured vldl they will be having triacylglycerol inside them but they cannot be able to deliver the uh, lipids to the peripheral tissue so what will happen there will be predisposition of atherosclerosis because of increased circulatory triacylglycerol due to absence of hdl so these are the two hypolipoproteinemias next we are coming to hyperlipoproteinemia so primary or familial hyperlipoproteinemia are of different type amongst them type 1 is due to lipoprotein lipase deficiency so type 1 is known as familial lipoprotein lipase deficiency where the function of lipoprotein lipase is defective now this defective lipoprotein lipase can be due to deficiency of lipoprotein lipase or the factor which is activating lipoprotein lipase that is apo c2 deficiency that is also causing inefficient lipoprotein lipase function so finally the effect will be there is no delivery of triacylglycerol or uh, no no breakdown of circulatory triacylglycerol in chylomicron and vldl so the clearance of those chylomicron and vld circulating vldl and L, uh, chylomicron will be low but it happens so coronary disease risk is comparatively low in this condition now coming to the type 2a which is known as hypercholesterolemia and this is due to the defect in ldl receptor now remember ld once again where we have discussed the structure of ldl receptor like all receptor there is a ligand binding domain now in type 2a dyslipoproteinemia that ligand binding domain of ldl receptor is basically defective so even if there is ldl receptor they cannot bind the apo b100 
So, what will happen? LDL will not be catabolized or uptaken inside the liver or inside the peripheral tissues. So, there will be elevated LDL in circulation causing hyper cholesterolemia, circulating cholesterol is very high and that will finally be deposited, those cholesterol will be deposited in uh, coronary vessels, heart vessels causing atherosclerosis. Next condition is type 3. So, type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia is also known in different other names like broad beta disease, remnant removal disease, familial disbeta lipoproteinemia. Now, this remnant removal disease if you remember, you can remember what happens in this type 3 condition. What happens is basically there is a defective remnant removal. Remnant means chylomicron remnant or VLDL remnant as well. So, what will actually where is the defect? The defect is in ApoE. Now, remember the remnants VLDL remnant IDL or chylomicron remnant they were uptaken by the receptors and those receptors were actually sensing ApoE in those remnants. So, if ApoE is defective in that case chylomicron remnant or VLDL remnant they will not be uptaken inside the liver. So, there will be definitely more circulating chylomicron and VLDL remnant that will be causing hypercholesterolemia deposition of those cholesterol in skins causing uh, xanthoma as well as atherosclerosis. Next is type 4 familial hypertriglycerolemia. Here is overproduction of VLDL. VLDL is produced in huge amount and this condition is associated with glucose intolerance as well as hyperinsulinemia. So, basically uh, this type 4 condition is associated with different other uh, metabolic condition like coronary artery disease, coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes mellitus, obesity, alcoholism and it is also induced by progesterone based hormones, administration of progesterone based hormones. So, this is about type 4 hypertriacylglycerolemia, then familial hyper alpha lipoproteinemia, HDL con concentration is increased. So, this is a sort of beneficial condition. Then there is deficiency of hepatic lipase. So, that hepatic lipase was important for clearing the residual triacylglycerol present in the remnants of HDL or chylomicron, those will not be cleared. Then familial LCAT deficiency, lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase enzyme deficiency which is important for reverse cholesterol transport. So, if there is LCAT deficiency, the reverse cholesterol transport will be hampered. Then another important one is familial lipoprotein A excess. Now, lipoprotein A is a specialized form of apoprotein which has apo where the li this lipoprotein has apo a remember this apo a a is in small letter now this apo a has the structural resemblance with the plasminogen now this plasminogen is basically uh, inhibits the clot removal so this is a pro atherogenic form causes atherosclerosis because it inhibits the clot removal, it inhibits the clot resolution. So, uh, with this type of uh, this familial lipoprotein A excess condition of lipo, this lipoproteinemia, definitely there is predisposition of coronary heart disease, premature coronary heart disease due to atherosclerosis and as well as different other vessels 
are more predisposed to thrombotic blockage because there is inhibition of fibrinolysis because of this APOA. Plasminogen is important for fibrinolysis remember uh, sorry plasminogen is important for uh, this clot removal uh, or fibrinolysis. So, that uh, clot removal is inhibited because of APOA. So, causing thrombosis in different other vessels. Now, coming to the important role of LDL in causing atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is basically narrowing of vessels, narrowing of circulatory vessels due to deposition of different forms of lipid as well as different inflammatory cells. So, finally, there is low circulation, low blood circulation through the vessels due to narrowing of the vessels. Now, LDL plays one very important role in this atherosclerosis pathogenesis. Now, atherosclerosis is a broad the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis are having different uh, hypothesis, different phenomena. We are highlighting how LDL is contributing to atherosclerosis. Now, remember LDL while going through the circulation if it remains in circulation for more time it is predisposed to different uh, cellular environment. Now, where oxidative stress or free radical generation is high in those conditions LDL or low density lipoprotein can be modified to different forms. One very important form is ox LDL that is oxidized LDL. Now, this oxidized LDL is important with regard to uh, pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. Now, what happens when there is uh, more oxidized LDL formation the receptors which uptakes this oxidized LDL are synthesized in more quantity or more amount. One such receptor is LOX1. Now, LOX1 is known as lectin like oxidized LDL receptor 1. Now, this LOX1 receptor is highly expressed in endothelial surface. Endothelial means blood vessels, endothelium. This in, in, this, in this blood vessels endothelium, LOX1 receptor is expressed in high amount when there is high circulation of oxidized LDL. Now, LOX1 binds to the ox LDL that is a receptor ligand binding and it delivers the oxidized LDL inside the intima media of blood vessel. Now, in this intima media there is a uh, pro oxidant environment there is already oxidative stress in the cellular environment which is which has already triggered the inflammation inflammation has caused inflammation has caused intrusion of macrophages inside the intima media now these macrophages are very much uh, predisposed to uptake oxidized ldl now the oxidized ldl which is bound to the lox1 receptor is uptaken by macrophage by various type of scavenger receptors like scavenger receptor A1. Remember this is A1 not B1. Then CD36, LOX1 these are the scavenger receptors which takes oxidized LDL from the endothelium. Inside the macrophage this oxidized LDL is processed. How processed? Definitely it is uptaken by receptor mediated endocytosis that endosome formed is fused with the lysosome forming endolysosome. In the lysosome there is lysosomal acid lipase, isosomal acid lipase degrades the cholesterol esters of oxidized LDL to free cholesterol and fatty acids. Now, free this free cholesterol once again can be esterified by another enzyme known as one enzyme known as ACAT1. ACAT1 stands for acyl coenzyme A acyl transferase. Now, 
this A cat 1 basically re esterifies the free cholesterol inside endoplasmic reticulum. Now, this stored cholesterol in uh, cholesterol ester in endoplasmic reticulum can be degraded with the help of the enzyme neutral cholesterol ester hydrolase to release cholesterol free cholesterol and that free cholesterol can be uptaken by HDL if you remember by the reverse cholesterol transport. Now, problem is when there is a pro oxidant pro oxidant environment in cell which is predisposing to uh, different uh, which is uh, causing release of different cytokines different pro inflammatory cytokines. Uh, accumulating different pro inflammatory cells, pro inflammatory macrophages in those conditions what happens these uh, receptors, these receptors related to reverse cholesterol transport like ABC A1 receptor, ABC G1 receptor, SRB1 receptor, these receptors are down regulated. So, the reverse cholesterol transport is hampered. Remember when there is a balanced condition, when there is a homeostasis in lipoprotein metabolism, even if this oxidized LDL is uh, entering the in macrophages, they can be uh, delivered to liver by a reverse cholesterol transport. But the problem happens when there is uh, this uh, the, pre, uh, the pro oxidant condition or inflammatory condition is exaggerated so much so that the homeostasis cannot be maintained. So, in those cases these receptors related to reverse cholesterol transport are very much down regulated. So, the reverse cholesterol transport is hampered as well as this A cat activity is very high. The macrophage receptor which are causing uptake of oxidized LDL they are expressed in very high concentration. So, what happens there is high uh, there is increased uptake of oxidized LDL in macrophages, those um, LDL are basically delivering cholesterol and the cholesterol esters are accumulated inside the macrophages which cannot be cleared by reverse cholesterol transport. So, the macrophages are now um, highly, um, highly full with uh, the uh, cholesterol ester forming foam cell. Now, those foam cells are actually accumulated in intima media of the vessels causing uh, formation of fatty streaks. You can see there is formation of fatty streaks which is you can see causing narrowing of the lumen. So, the lumen uh, diameter is narrowed down and finally, they are forming atherosclerotic plaque. Now, this atherosclerotic plaque is important for narrowing of blood vessels finally, predisposing to myocardial infarction. So, this is how LDL contributes to formation of atherosclerotic plaque finally, causing atherosclerosis and myocardial infarction. So, another important role uh, here I want to discuss is that the role of CETP. Remember CETP was important for um, exchange of triacylglycerol um, and uh, different cholesterol esters in between HDL and um, other lipoproteins like VLDL or IDL or LDL. Now, the problem is when there is inhibition of CETP, the HDL 3 cannot be converted to HDL 2. Remember that uh, there is a cycle of HDL, if you remember that HDL 3 was actually uh, forming HDL 2 by donating triacyl uh, sorry by uptaking triacylglycerol from VLDL or L, uh, IDL with the help of the protein CETP. Now, this circulation this cycle will be hampered and remember HDL 2 was actually used to be uptaken by liver. So, what will happen there will be increased concentration of HDL 3 in absence of CETP this conversion to HDL 2 will not happen. Similarly, HDL 2 will not be uptaken by liver because there that is not HDL 2 that is HDL 3 
hepatic lipase is acting less also the scavenging function of HDL will be low. So, finally, CTP inhibition is associated with atherosclerosis. Now, there are different drugs which causes inhibition of CTP those are actually predisposing to atherosclerosis. So, what we have seen that LDL is uh, related to positively related to the risk of cardiovascular disease, but the role of HDL is not absolute. Remember, even if HDL 3 is very high in circulation that is causing atherosclerosis. So, what is required is LDL HDL ratio which can be used as a diagnostic tool for cardiovascular disease. So, the good one LDL HDL ratio is taken as 3.5. So, in this session what we have learnt is a detailed reverse cholesterol transport how HDL is actually transferring back the peripheral or extra hepatic cholesterol to liver. Then the role of HDL in atherosclerosis via formation of foam cells through different modified LDL like oxidized LDL and also we have discussed different primary dyslipoproteinemia or primary lipoprotein metabolism disorder. So, these are my references. Thank you all. See you in the next session.